Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, even yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also join God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have received the atonement. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is a figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one, one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which have received abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by one, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the by righteousness of one the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Uh, shall be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. I was reading through the chapter this week and it struck me how um, God's salvation plan is a glorious thing. God is the one who designed it. God's salvation could never, never from the mind of a man. We could never design that. Salvation came from an infinite mind of God. And many people don't like it. As all of us were in the church at one point. How the church, they teach that you have to do something for salvation. And the Bible doesn't teach that. Salvation is a free gift of God. And, it's, and we can't do anything to earn it. We, we don't deserve it. We can't live a good enough life to, for God to give it to us. We're all sinners, and we deserve uh, to be destroyed forevermore. For God in his wonderful wisdom, and his infinite wisdom, has designed a glorious and a wonderful salvation for God's elect. Came from the mind of God. Salvation came from God's mind. And when he saves us, he didn't save us because we were a nice person or anything of that sort. Remember last week I was talking about how God saved us to the praise of his glory. That's it. That's it. We're not worthy of it. We're not deserving of salvation. But God from elect the people to salvation and he, he has paid for their sins from, the, from 
eternity past and he worked out his salvation program in time and throughout the history of the world he has saved his elect and they will glorify God. God's salvation is, you know, if for those who God has opened their spiritual eyes to this wonderful salvation, we can't help but to praise and worship God for it. When we see how sinful we are, we're undeserving of it. And for God to give us such a wonderful gift of salvation, it's beyond me. Words can never describe it. You know, and it's, it's a glorious salvation plan. And many people are offended at it. Remember when Christ brought the gospel, as he brought it to the Pharisees of, of that day, how they were offended at it? When Christ began to tell them what the gospel were about, they left. And he finally turned to the disciples and says, would you also go away? But wonderfully, God, you know, to whom shall we go, they say? Thou has the words of eternal life. To whom shall we go? To a man? No, we have to go to God, the Bible. If you look at um, Ephesians chapter 1, I read part of it last week, but let's read it again. Ephesians chapter 1, I think it's 1. In verse 4, we read Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us, God's elect, un unto adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Why he saves us to the good pleasure of his will. He, he, he saves us. And he goes on verse 6. And he says, to what? To the praise of his glory. Of his grace where he made us accepted in the beloved. That's why he saves the people for himself. To the praise of his glory. That's it. We're no more worthy of salvation than anyone else out there in, in the world. Who cares nothing about the Bible. God save a people to the praise of his glory. That's it. We're not worthy of, of it at all. And if you look at um, Deuteronomy, let's go over to the Old Testament. Deuteronomy chapter, I believe it's 7. Let's start reading in verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. God gives us in some more information. For thou art a holy people unto... He's speaking to Israel, but you got to look for the spirit, deeper spiritual meaning. Speaking to the, his, his elect. For thou art a holy people unto Jehovah thy God. Jehovah hath not chosen thee to be... Uh, Jehovah thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people. And you know, you read First Peter chapter 2, you see a peculiar people as God's, God's people, a special people unto himself. See, we're chosen by God unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. See, it's a peculiar people, a special people above all the peoples of the world. God made the decision. We're chosen in him before the foundation of the world. And verse 7 says, Jehovah did not set his love upon you, nor choose you because you were more in number than any people, for yet ye were the fewest of all people. Remember God tells us, many are called, but few are chosen. You see, God set his love upon his people for his own glory. He's chosen the people. He's adopted us for his own purposes. To bring glory to him all through eternity. And, and, and while we're waiting upon the Lord now, we are glorifying God by waiting upon him to, to complete our salvation. We're waiting upon him. And that also glorifies God. You see, and it goes on in verse 8. But, verse 8, but because Jehovah loved you, God's decision, whom he puts his love upon, upon is, not our, is not our decision. And because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, has Jehovah brought you out of, with 
a mighty hand and redeem you out of the house of a bondman from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that Jehovah thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. And, verse 10, and repay them that hate him to their face, to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hateth him, he will repay him to his face. You see why God chose a people for himself? It's to his glory. God chose, made a decision to put his love upon a people for himself. And many people are offended at it. God doesn't have to save any one of us. He has obligated himself to save a people for himself. But, you know, that's his business. That's his business to do so. And as you bring the gospel, many of you did, and you talk about the grace of God, and there's nothing you could do to save yourself, many people don't like it. It is God's decision. Remember God tells us in the Philippians 2, it's God that worketh in us to will and to do of his good pleasure. We can't, shouldn't be desirous of taking any credit, not even the slightest, of you t doing something for salvation. None whatsoever. We should never want to say, I did this, and so God saved me. No. If it's 99.99% grace and there's an outside remote chance of 1%, I did something, it's a works gospel. Grace is no more grace. So you see why God saves us. And as he saves us, we are going to it bring, it bring glory to him. God's salvation is a glorious thing. You know, it glorifies him. Remember in Luke chapter 2, remember the whole he heaven was re reacted to the birth of Christ, didn't he? And what was the angel saying? Glory to God in the highest. God's salvation program brings glory to him. As you see the heavenly host, as Christ was, he was announced that he was born and the heavenly host was rejoicing. Um, but you know, the, the line of the song I was thinking about last week, now it finally came back to my head. Remember the song says, men were dumb so the angels sing? And that, the, the, the song that we hear here on family radio, How Shall I King Come? The song says, men were dumb so the angels sing. And we see, it came from the Bible. The angels praising God. You, uh, look at, uh, uh, where was it at? Luke 2. Uh, let's, let's pick up, back up a little bit to verse 9. Verse 9 of uh, Luke 2. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. He shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was, there, there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. You see, God gets the glory. The heavenly hosts were rejoicing at this wonderful, magnificent salvation that God has provided for man. For unto you is born this day a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And the heavenly host was rejoicing. So you see, God's salvation plan is a glorious, glorious thing that God has designed. Look at uh, Psalm 115. One verse there, Psalm 115, verse 1. It's a very familiar verse. Psalm 115, verse 1. Here we read, Not unto us, O Jehovah, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory, for thy mercy and for thy true sake. You know, God gets the glory in saving a people for himself, not us. Remember when John the Baptist announced the Lord Jesus Christ? He says Christ must increase while he decreases. All glory goes to God for salvation. We, sh we shouldn't want to, to enter. We cannot enter into that. God gets the glory for, slaves, for saving 
a people for himself. Look at another passage in 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians um, chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 17 and 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 17 and 18. It says, if we're going to do anything, this is what we ought to do. Uh, but he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. We want to glory, we glory in Christ for what he has done for saving me, for saving you, you see. For not he that commendeth himself is approved, but whom the Lord commendeth. You see, if we're going to do any glory, we glory in the Lord. We give God the praise and the glory for saving me. Don't say, oh, I did this and he saved me, or I did that and he saved me. No. We glory in the Lord. We give him all the praise and glory for saving us. And another passage in Jeremiah, I believe it's Jeremiah 9. In Jeremiah 9, I believe, verse, uh, verses 23, 23 and 24. Thus said Jehovah, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth, which Christ is understanding, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am Jehovah, which exercise loving kindness and judgment and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith Jehovah. We delight in Christ. Give God the glory. Look at um, 1 Corinthians Chapter 1, see that Christ is understanding. Verse 29, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 29. That no flesh should glory in his presence, but of him are we in Christ Jesus, whom of God is made unto us wisdom and and righteousness and sanctification and redemption that according as it is written he that glorieth let him glory in the Lord and we just read that passage if we're going to glory in our salvation we give God all the glory for saving us we shouldn't want to take any credit for anything we're nothing but dust and ashes that's all we are we're sinners and we're worthy of eternal death so we're going to glory, we glory, we give, we give God all the glory for saving us because we're undeserved sinners. When we, what, what are we? What are we? What, are, what is our works? The filthy rags, the Bible tell, tell, tells us. So our works will never save us. We glory in salvation and God deserves all the glory. It's a glorious salvation plan that he has provided for us. So we shouldn't be desirous of any glory whatsoever. Because God is the Savior. He is the designer of our salvation. He's the one who wrote the Bible. So we come humbly at his feet. And we sit at his feet and say, Lord, you teach me. You know, that's how we are to come before God. Not with our holy rags wrapped around us. Because we, what are we? <laughs> at the end of the day, he takes our breath from our bodies and we die and we go back to the ground. And, what, and, and we're, 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 we're forever dead, forevermore. You see, but um, one of the things that I would like to look at for a few Sundays, God is is that God paints a picture of you and me that is not a good picture. The way the Bible talks about us, what we are in our hearts. Remember, God tells us the heart of man is desperately wicked, and He tells us these things in 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 the Bible. And if it was never in the Bible, I wouldn't believe. How could we believe it? But God tells us. Remember, God because look in the very heart of us and he knows the real me and you he knows everything nothing escaped the eyes of God he knows our heart he knows us you see and the picture that he paints of us is, is a picture that is true 
because God is, 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 is telling us about me. And I tell you, when you start looking at the Bible, how he sees us, why would he even bother to save anyone? Why would he do that? It's to the praise of his glory that he has, he has decided to save a people for himself. Uh, let's look at the passage I just read in Romans 5, verse 19. In Romans, and I'll just read this one verse in Romans 5. Um, Romans 5 verse 19 God says for, for as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners so by the obedience of one shall many be dead see what be righteous what Adam and Eve did back in Genesis it's a terrible thing they did in rebelling against God it's a horrible thing they did when God gave them the law and told them the day you do, you do this you will die it's a terrible thing they did. They, they, they didn't kill anybody, did they? No. They just simply took a fruit from off a tree. What's the big deal? All they did was uh, took a fruit. Look what God did. Look what God did to them. I mean, he came down on mankind with a hammer. And look, look at us now. It's a terrible thing they did. See, sin is terrible. Is sin, we shouldn't take sin lightly, whether it's a little sin or a big sin. Disobedience to God's law is a terrible thing. Terrible thing. You know, we're sinners, and you know, if a child takes a cookie from a cookie jar, you're not going to cut the child's arm off. You know, it's a terrible thing to rebel against God. You know, in any aspect of our life, a tiny white lie or if a child disobeys their parent, it's a terrible thing horrible thing that they're doing when, when we rebel against God in, in the slightest of matter. God demands perfection. Not our perfection. God's perfection. Could any one of us live up to that type of perfection? No. So when Adam and Eve rebelled against God it plunged the whole human race into sin. Look at, you know, I often used to, I read that and I'm like, wow. Look at what God, he cursed them and sin began. You see murder showed up and Oh, it's something terrible they did. So we should never take sin lightly, no matter what it is. Remember God tells, he told them in the garden, and when you do this, you will die. Well, then they didn't fall over dead right away. Eventually, they live to be hundreds of years, and then they die. But God tells us, the wages of sin is death. Right there in the Garden of Eden, he started out with, 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 with that. The wages of sin is death, and it hasn't changed. You see, and sin is, you know, the earlier we, we, we learn this in our life as we grow up, the better off life will be. Get away from sin. Don't monkey with it. Sin destroys. It destroys families. It destroys lives. It destroys everything it is. It looks good, but the end result of sin is death. So, now, let's stop here, and hopefully, Lord willing, I'll share some more verses. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time together of hymn sing and Bible reading and fellowshipping around thy word. Oh, Lord, give us a hatred for sin, oh, Lord. And by nature, we're sinners, and we, sin brings certain pleasures to us. And sin is, is, is leading to our destruction. And, oh, Lord, we thank you for the grace of God that you have given to thy people, that, oh, Lord, in thy wisdom... Thou hast decided to save a people for thyself, and they're no different than anyone else. We're all in nature, children of wrath, even as others. We're, those whom you have chosen is no different than others. It's only by thy grace and thy mercy, O Lord, thou hast decided to save a people for thyself. And O Lord, we glorify thee for this wonderful salvation plan that you have provided for us through Christ. And O Lord, we pray as we, throughout this day, that you will have us to give you all the praise and glory for saving us and we should not be desirous of any credit of salvation Lord I pray for each one of us who are here and those who are listening over the internet that you may bless O oh Lord the reading and the teaching of thy word to our hearts we ask these things in Jesus name Amen